Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Aron Nincevic and Georgi Flas. This very beautiful chess game was played in Zurich in 1907. Nincevic had white pieces and he started with e4. Flas played e6, d4, d5, the French defense. e takes on d5, the exchange variation. Black to move, e takes on d5, is nowadays the most played move. Flas played the queen takes on d5. Knight to c3, attacking the queen, bishop to b4, pinning the knight. Knight to f3, knight to f6, bishop to g5, black to move. Bishop takes knight, check was played. Knight to e4 would be another way to go, forcing white to play bishop to d2 back to our game bishop takes knight check pawn takes bishop knight to c6 bishop takes on f6 pawn takes bishop bishop to e2 rook to g8 placing the rook on semi-open file intending to castle queen's side should white castle king's side or not Nimcevic did Bishop to d7, white to move, there is no time to waste. c4, attacking the queen, queen to h5, d5, attacking the knight. What is the best square for the knight? Player with the black pieces came up with a brilliant idea. He castled queenside, daring Nincevic to take the knight. How would you continue? Nitsovic played knight to d4. Let's take it back. What was the trap about? If d takes on c6, then bishop takes on c6. Discovered attack on the queen. If the queen moves to a safe spot, then rook takes on g2. Check. After king takes rook, rook to g8. Check. King to h1. Queen takes on f3. Check. Bishop takes queen, bishop takes bishop checkmate. What a brilliant idea. Back to our game. Nincovic played knight to d4, discovered attack on the black queen. Black to move, queen to h3 was played. Let's take it back. Queen to g5 would pose white a bigger problem. After bishop to f3, then e takes on d5. And black is doing well. Back to our game. Flas played queen to h3. And that move has a purpose too. And the purpose is checkmate. g3, weakening the light squares. Black to move. Knight to e5 was expected. Instead, Flas played rook to g6. Daring. Nimsovic again to take the knight on c6. How would you continue? Would you take the knight or not? Well, after thinking long and hard, Nimsovic decided to take the knight. Bishop takes pawn, threatening check, mate. Well, the knight is pinned. If knight takes bishop, then rook takes queen. What would you do in this position if you had white pieces. I will show you two variations that don't work well for white. First, if white plays f3, preventing checkmate, then rook takes on g3 check, pawn takes rook, queen takes pawn check, king to h1, queen to h4 check, king to g1, rook to g8 checkmate, and let's go back. How about bishop to f3? In this position, black has rook takes knight and also rook to h6, threatening checkmate. After rook to e1, queen takes on h2, check, king to f1, rook takes knight. If bishop takes on c6, then rook takes queen. Rook takes rook, b takes on c6, black wins, and let's go back. If in this position queen takes on d4, then bishop takes on f3, 
and again black wins. Back to our game. What is the solution then? Nincevic sacrificed the queen. Knight takes on c6. Rook takes queen. Rook from f takes on d1. B takes on c6. What was the idea behind the queen sacrifice? What would you do in this position if you had white pieces? Nincevic played c5, clearing the path for the bishop. Rook to g8, defending the back rank. White played a move and black resigned and the move is rook from a to b1, caging the king. There is no sensible defense against bishop to a6, check, mate. That is why in this position, Flas resigned. What a brilliant game by Aron Nimcevic. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.